Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle, and one year of hardcore miniature painting later, and I've run across some products that I just have to talk about. So this list will be broken into two parts, the three products that I absolutely love and use on a daily basis and have replaced other things that I use, and two honorable mentions that I also love, but, eh. So, starting off, black and white paints. I go through a lot of mini paints and the two colors that I go through the fastest are black and white because it goes into every single painting project and so I really wanted to find some bulk, good quality paint that I could buy so that I just have it. I don't have to keep rebuying more bottles of Army Painter or keep not buying bottles of Games Workshop black and white because they're terrible. And so I found a wonderful white paint that I really, really love in Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic Titanium White. This stuff is great. I put a dollop of this on every palette that I work on and it works wonderfully. It's Heavy Body Acrylic. I think if I ever manage to use this up, I might try a regular acrylic, not a thick body, to see if maybe I would have to thin it a little less. But this stuff works absolutely great. I was a little bit surprised then when I bought the Liquitex Black this is really bad. I didn't like this at all. It was very, very thin and watery and hard to work with. And so in my quest to find a really good white and a really good black, it led me to an unlikely place. Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Indoor Outdoor 21985E Black is fantastic. It's a really good black paint. I don't know if it is the best black paint I've ever used. I like it more than Games Workshop and Vallejo. I think it might not be, it might not give quite as good coverage as Army Painter Black, but it's totally, totally good enough. It's super easy to use. I think two thin coats will give you a really, really nice solid black finish. So it's great. Also, this is like 80 cents for, for this uh, two, two ounce little bottle. Super great. These have totally replaced all other black and white products I have. And that's great because even though, well, this guy was a little bit pricey at like $9, 80 cents, no big deal. I'll, I can buy a hundred of these and it'll be fine. And I probably won't have to. This one tube is probably gonna last me years for just a few cents. It's great. So I'm very excited that I now have a black and a white that I like and I'll, I'll always have ready to rock and roll. I don't need to get more. It, they're just ready to go. Black and white paint. Next up, some pre-mixed texture paste. This is Vallejo Thick Mud Acrylic Industrial Thick Mud. And this stuff is great. I always used to mix up my own texture pastes because it's not a tr that tricky a thing to make, but I find that it actually is really nice to have some of it lying around ready to rock and roll. And this stuff is actually not that bad, especially when you compare it to Games Workshop's technical paint, Sterland Mud, where for a little tiny 24 milliliter little pot of it, uh, that's $8. Here, you're getting two 100 milliliters, 6.76 fluid ounces for about $15. That's the, that's the best price I've seen online for it. It's a little bit more pricey on Amazon, but it's still a better deal than Games Workshop Technical Based. And this stuff's great. It's very consistent, it's very smooth, it's like scooping peanut, uh, peanut butter out of the jar. And it hasn't replaced completely mixing up my own technical paste. I think if I was basing an entire army in like one go, I'd probably mix my own because I can make it for a little bit cheaper. But this is great, particularly for doing one-off bases or for doing texture. If you want to create like a rusty, scratchy, muddy texture on a model surface, this stuff is great. And it's great to just be able to grab it off the shelf, crack it open, and then you're ready to go. It just smells like paint. Vallejo sells a lot of different colors of this, but I just bought the one I could get for cheapest and I always paint over it. Um, maybe if you were doing uh, model tank dioramas like this paint is meant for, you would actually get a paint that better matches the environment you want to recreate. But I find that this gets, you can paint over this just fine and it'll look great. And I really like, I just really like having it around. Vallejo Thick Mud. Don't leave home without it. And last but not least, matte medium and gloss medium. These are big chonker, 237 milliliter, eight fluid ounces, matte medium and gloss medium from Liquitex Professional. 
and I use these in just about every single painting project. And I suspect that these will probably last me my entire painting career. Uh, I bought this one quite a few years ago, and this one a little bit more recently. And after, you know, a year of hardcore painting, it's only down to that line. I've only used up maybe 25%. So if every year is another 25%, I mean, this, this little chunger is going to last me four years of hardcore painting. And the gloss, I don't use quite as much, but when I need it, I'm glad that I have it. I've used a little bit less, a little bit less of the gloss medium, but I still like having it around, especially for shining up areas that are going to get a decal or just making things that should be glossy, glossy, like, like goo or blood. I really, really like having these around for mixing. Uh, I'm not that great at glazing, and so I found a really good cheat is just to mix your paints with enough matte medium to make it transparent. And then you can just layer it on, kind of like a normal paint, but it'll look like a glaze. I find that super duper helpful, and it really helps me increase my painting consistency and quality. And so I really like having big old bottles of these mediums. And I think for most hobbyists, you could probably risk the biscuits and just go with the cheaper four milliliter bottles, especially with gloss, because I just don't use as much gloss as I use matte medium. But I like the big chonker bottles because I just like, I like the heft and I like knowing that I've got it. I don't need to worry about who I'm running out. Should I reorder? I just, I like, I like the big bottles. I don't know if there's a huge difference between the artist and the professional. The professional is the more expensive version. I've never tried the artist version of these mediums, but they're not craziness either. Um, I think I found the matte medium for $15 and the gloss medium for $10, which is a little pricey, but these go into every single painting project. So little by little, a penny here, a penny there, I am getting my money's worth out of these. Mediums. And before I get to the mentions, I just want to point out that if you're ever looking for Wargaming Terrain, we have a bunch of STLs available over on our Patreon. Hop over there to check them out is the best way to help support us making videos, and you also get access to Hobby Hangouts, behind the scenes, and other exclusive content. These last two things are also tools that I discovered this year, and I really, really enjoy... Asterisk. And number one is the scalpel. I've been using a scalpel to clean my models for many months now, and I was surprised to find that it is very slightly sharper than a standard hobby X-Acto knife, which does mean that it's a little bit better. And I've enjoyed using it, but I don't think it's really gonna replace the classic hobby knife. I think the classic hobby knife has more utility and is better in a bunch of ways. The scalpel may be a little bit sharper, but there's a tiny bit of wiggle to the blade that might not be there if I bought a higher end scalpel, but this is the cheapest of the cheap X-Acto knife and it's perfect. And this is the cheapest of the cheap scalpel and it's kind of bad. So a little annoying there. It's frustrating that you need a tool to change the blades. You might be able to really finagle it with your fingers, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't try it. And uh, another really annoying thing, is the blades come sterilized and individually wrapped, which means that you're producing a little bit more wastage. And it's it's an art hobby. You're, you're going to have some wastage, but it's a little dumb. I think I will definitely keep using the scalpel. Also, another big thing I ran into with the scalpels is the one I bought, the four blades it came with were perfection, super sharp, amazing. And so I bought a hundred pack more of scalpels and that hundred pack are kind of bad. I think they're still ever so slightly sharper than my 100 pack of X-Actos, but it's barely noticeable. You, you gotta get really good scalpel blades if you want to really take advantage of how sharp scalpels are. And they just don't have the same utility of an X-Acto knife. I definitely don't think I would be cutting, I would be comfortable cutting paper, cardboard, or foam core board with this because the blade is kind of twisted in its socket as opposed to the X-Acto that is held firmly in place. Although I have, but I have measured both of these with a digital caliper and found that they are the exact same width of metal. I suspected that the scalpel might be a little bit thinner, but it is not, they are the same. They're the same in many ways, but the scalpel is ever so slightly sharper. And I think I will continue to use it in my toolbox, but maybe not as a daily driver. Maybe if I'm working on some really delicate Malifaux models where I really want to get in there and carve away mold lines as opposed to scrape mold lines, I think then the scalpel might come in handy. 
But it's also a little frustrating to have two tools. You know, when I'm working on a model and I'm just doing some work, I don't want to be switching. And that just adds a little bit more time and I'm already a slow model builder. But I still think that the good old hobby exacto knife is king. And lastly, an actual wet palette product, the Stay Wet Handy Palette Masterson's Wet Palette. I really like these palettes. I actually have two of them, and that's because I often have two different painting projects going on at the same time. Usually I'm working on something for videos, and then for live streams on YouTube, by the way, I live stream every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central, come to hang out. Uh, I'm often painting something different, and so this way I have two different sets of colors going at once. But it's just a good, cheap wet palette. It's really, really good. It's got a nice sponge in there. I have replaced the paper it came with, uh, with classic parchment paper. And I use the lid of the container as a dry palette for dry brushing and just for little touch-up paint jobs. And it actually has a really nice texture to it. It has a really great texture to it that actually works really, really well for like getting paint to stick to it and for wiping paint away with dry brushing. And it's gonna look pretty cool once it's like completely covered in paint. But I really like this palette. I don't really have any complaints about it. It's everything you need it to be. A shallow Tupperware with a lid. And it comes with a sponge already cut to size. It's just, it's just solid at what it does. It's not flashy, it's not trying to show off, but it, it's got it where it counts. I find that often if I have it full of water and paint and then I put the lid on overnight, I find that the paint absorbs a little too much water and I come back and everything is too overly watered and ruined. But if I take my top and I just put it on its corners so that it's got a little bit of airflow, the evaporation can match the water absorption and that works out really, really well to keep my paints nice and fresh. The reason though that there is an asterisk beside these palettes is they are no better than any other paint palettes and they're definitely no better than a classic free palette. I have a video on making the best free paint palettes. You take a plate, you take a paper towel, and you take a piece of parchment paper and you're good to go. Exactly the same ability to use as one of these official products. But as it goes, this is my favorite painting palette product just because it is super duper cheap. And it has a really, really nice volume. You really get a lot of room to work with. But it is definitely not an essential product. And you know, if, you're, if your hobby dollars are to the point where you could get this palette or you could get models, probably get the models. But if you have 10 bucks to splurge, I think one of these wet palettes is a great investment. And again, they're not any better or worse than any other palette. If you want something with a little bit of brush storage, you might want to go with the Army Painter Wet Palette. And if you want to feel like an absolute baller, you could go with the Redgrass Gaining Palette. But again, it's a wet palette. They're all the exact same thing. So these were my favorite hobby finds of this year, and I cannot wait to see what the next year brings. And hopefully in the next year, if I can get more gaming in, I would love to do a follow-up video, my favorite gaming tools.